Hello and welcome everyone. In this video I will show how to make desert terrain scenery. I will be showing all steps to make this desert terrain and I will also be painting this triceratops model in this video. As the first step I will be using this board of multiplex to serve as the base. I will be placing some layers of this dense foam on top of this. I already cut them into shape using a hot wire cutter. Using PVA glue I attach them to the board. Next, I round off some edges on the foam using a lighter. I make some areas of depth on the board using this hobby blowtorch. When melting foam like this, make sure you have good ventilation or wear a respirator mask. I've added some air hardening modeling clay to make a transition between the layers. Using wood filler, I then cover the sides. And when fully dried, give it a fine sanding using fine grit sandpaper. To add the first layer of primer to the base, I'll be using this gesso primer. I use black for the sides and then mix in some white for the upper part. I then move to the wooden underside of the board. To make this a bit nicer, I will apply a layer of wood stain over it and add a few felt pads afterwards. By doing this, it will present itself a bit better and be a bit easier on your display case. To prepare some sand for the base, I'll be using this construction sand. I take a portion out of the bag and sift it through some different size strainers. This can be a very cheap way to get your basic sand for most of your builds. And you can supplement this with types of gravel, ballast or fine grout. The base is then given a layer of PVA glue. I follow this up by adding some fine sand and then a layer of tile grout to fill in any areas I may have missed. To make some rock outcroppings, I'll be using this natural tree bark. To get them into shape, 
I'll be breaking some of the larger pieces. You could use pliers to do this, but since I go to the gym once a year, I can easily do this by hand. Some of the sharp edges are then round off using this small dremel. I give them a rinse using some rubbing alcohol. To make sure these bark pieces are clean and not have any traces of lichen in them. As the next step, I will make a mixture out of modeling paste, acrylic paint and some sand. This is then used to attach the bark onto the base. The remainder of this mixture I will then transfer into this piping bag. Using this I will fill in some gaps where needed and blend it in using a damp brush afterwards. To make some medium sized rocks and boulders, I've used these rock molds and some casting plaster. These are then scattered around the base and attached using the paste mixture. The next material used is this cat litter, which you can find at a pet store or supermarket. More specifically, you want to look for this ingredient. This cat litter is obviously designed to absorb, so you'll find it covered with this powder. In order to use this, this is the part we need to remove from it. This is done by rinsing it three or four times with water, until all the powder is removed and afterwards let it fully dry. I like to use this not necessarily because it's cheap, but because of their relative flat shape. It also accepts paint much better as opposed to natural stones, which can sometimes be difficult to paint. To attach them onto the base, I add a thin layer of the acrylic paste mixture and press them in. I keep adding them until the ground is littered with litter, literally. This is then followed by the coarse and fine sand and then a layer of tile grout for more texture. Before gluing it in place, I remove some of the excess grout on the rocks. 
Next, I will be applying a layer of scenery glue. For purpose of the video, I will use two different recipes, which both can be found on my channel. This matte medium recipe is the one I use most of the time. It's ready to use, flows really well and dries with a matte finish. Another option is to use this recipe, which needs a bit more attention. The PVA glue in this recipe will slowly separate from the water over time, so before use it needs to be mixed. As a little tip, I would recommend stirring it rather than shaking. Because this recipe has a bit of dish soap in it for it to flow better, shaking it will create this foam party in a bottle. Which can be fun at times, but hobby wise it's just going to slow you down. Before adding this glue, I prepare the area with some 70% alcohol. If you have a thick layer of sand, this really helps to make the mixture flow better through the sand. Using raw umber and black acrylic paint, I undercoated an area on the base. To this paint, I will then add some modeling paste and tile grout. I keep adding this grout until it's almost unworkable. When mixed, I add it to the base using this four-fingered modeling tool. I follow this up by adding some drops of water, mainly focusing on the edges. As the next step, I will create a few dried out trees for the base. I'll be using a few broken branches and these tree roots. I assemble and glue them in place using PVA glue and some of the acrylic paste I've used earlier. To create some cracked earth I'll be using this crackle paste. I apply a layer of this on the area I've painted earlier and touch it up afterwards by adding some extra sand and a few twigs. When everything had dried, I then began painting the base. I start by adding a layer of sand colored primer. The larger rocks were then given a coat of desert tan mixed with German grey, followed with some extra German grey as the shadow color. I'll then be adding a few highlights to the rocks by dry brushing them. Instead of a brush, I will use these dense makeup sponges. I prefer to use these sometimes, as brushes tend to leave a grainy effect on larger areas. I add some paint on them, remove most of it on a paper towel and then go over the rocks. When this was done, I've added a few pigment powders over them and blend them in using a soft brush. 
because of the texture of this bark, the pigments will stick to it even in dry form. This will not be the case with the plaster rocks which will require a different approach, which I will show later. With the pigments added, I then seal them in place by adding a layer of matte varnish. To get a more dusty appearance, I go over it one more time using a lighter tone pigment. I make sure to rub this in all the cracks and on the surface to end up with a thin layer. To keep that dusty appearance I will not varnish this and leave it as it is now. So technically this last layer is not sealed but under normal circumstances it will not come off. And even if that was the case you still have multiple layers of color underneath. Next, I began adding a few colors to the ground. Here, I've used a mix of desert tan and German grey. I then follow this up with khaki brown. A mixture of brown and grey is then used to paint the rough ground I created. I gradually add some more grey towards the middle. When this was done, I began painting the stones and boulders on the base. I've used a few brown and grey tones to do this. Using German grey, I've then added some shadows. To add a few highlights on them, I also gave these a dry sponge. I'll then be adding some pigments over these rocks. As I mentioned earlier, in dry form these pigments will not stick to plaster very well. So I will be adding them in the form of a wash by mixing them with water. The water will just evaporate, leaving the pigments where you want them. This first layer of pigment wash has a drop of matte varnish mixed in, so it will bond a bit better to the plaster. When dry, 
I remove some of the excess using a brush. As the next step, I'll be adding a layer of a lighter tone pigment wash on top of this. This layer has no varnish in it, as I want to remove most of it and create the same dusty effect as on the larger rocks. The dead trees, logs and twigs were then given a layer of buff color. To give them a wash, I mixed some watercolor pigment with water. I will use this as a pin wash meaning it's meant to outline the recesses and leaving the rest in its original color. Because watercolors have very little binder in them, I can clean the raised surfaces with a wet sponge, even when fully dried. To outline the cracks in the cracked earth, I will be using an oil wash. I prepare this wash by mixing a tiny drop of oil paint with some white spirit. The reason I used an oil wash for this and not watercolors is that I didn't want to risk reactivating the layer of crackle paste, as this is acrylic based and very slow drying. I doubt it would happen, but just as a precaution. Using a sponge dipped in white spirit, I clean the excess oil wash from the raised areas. To make a few trees for the base, I'll be using these dried branches, which I found at a garden center. I give them a coat of a light gray primer followed by the base coat. For the foliage I'll be using this type of supersize plant. I've clipped off a few bits, preserved them in glycerin and spray painted them green afterwards. For this technique I will refer to my pine tree tutorial for which I will place a link in the description. Using PVA glue, I attach them to the branches. With the leaves attached, I then give the trunks a light dusting of buff color from a slight angle. 
to add some more color to the leaves, I've added some sepia wash from underneath and then some yellow wash from above. When the wash had dried, I finished them by adding a coat of satin varnish. The trees were then added to the base. The sides of the base were given a layer of black paint. I've added some gloss varnish to the rough ground in the middle. To make a few smaller plants for the base, I've used these two natural plants. These were also preserved in glycerin, spray painted and then varnished. I've added them randomly around the base to give it some life. I've used PVA glue to glue them in place. To add some small patches of grass, I'll be using these grass tufts, which are also scattered around the base. To create a bit of leftover water, I'll be using two-part epoxy resin. I mix equal parts and give it a slight tint by adding a drop of paint. I carefully add this to the center of the ground. That completes all the steps for the terrain piece. I will now be adding a model to this to create a little diorama. The model I'll be using is this juvenile Triceratops, which I will be giving a repaint. The model is first primed using grey primer, followed by a layer of sand yellow. I already removed the mold lines and filled in the seams. I've then pre-shaded some areas using mahogany. This is then followed by a layer of US sand and sandy brown from above. Next, I will cut out a strip of this sponge sheet. 
I'll be using this as a stencil to create a small modeled effect on its back. I've used acrylic sepia ink to do this. Using medium brown, I then made the markings on the crest. To give this some more color, I've added a splash of burnt umber ink. The toenails were then given a layer of grey-green. Mahogany brown is then used for the area around the eye, and black for the eye itself. As the next step, I will use a few glazes to make certain colors a bit richer and add a few highlights. I do this by creating a well diluted mixture of paint and acrylic medium, with the ratio being around 1 part paint to 10 parts acrylic medium. Here I will be making the areas I've appreciated a bit richer. I apply some of the glaze mixture and then swap to a clean brush which is slightly damp. I use this to blend in the edges a little. Using a glaze of burnt umber, I will then make a small color transition on what I believe is the beak of this model. Since this is so thin, it requires a bit of build up, but after 3 or 4 passes, you should start seeing some color appearing. The small horns on its head were then given the same treatment and I follow this up by adding a glaze of bone white to highlight them. To outline some of the details, I'll be using watercolors. These watercolors are pretty harsh at first, but they will become much lighter when dry. Since this has very little binder in it, I can remove the excess even when fully dry. To do this cleanup, I use a makeup sponge dampened with water. Next, I will be adding a pigment wash on the toenails to simulate some dust. I'll be using the same color pigments as I used on the terrain piece. 
the pigments had fully dried, I removed some of the excess, just as I did on the rocks of the base. With the model fully painted, I then seal in the layers using satin varnish. Which is then followed by a small amount of gloss varnish to the eyes. I've then added the model onto the terrain piece. That brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you've enjoyed watching it and to see you in the next one. Until then, thank you for watching and take care. Work complete.